Recently, somebody asked me to go over my outdoor enclosures for the helium miners, and so I thought it was a good idea because it is super important. So all of my uh, hotspots, all of my outdoor enclosures, they have the same structure. The only difference is gonna be the placement. But I made this setup and I didn't know it at the time, but it seems to be a universal setup on anywhere you wanna set it up. You can set us up for the flagpole, for a rooftop, or even just on a tree. But I do wanna point out that ever since I started doing these antenna upgrades, I did start to experience a lot of flatlining issues and sinking issues due to the fact that we have so much more traffic coming into these miners and the memory just kind of gets bombarded. I'm gonna put this video somewhere right here and uh, it's just gonna basically walk you through how to fix that flatlining issue by doing a resync or a reboot and then doing a fast sync with your miner. So once you do an antenna upgrade, be on the lookout for that. Do expect these problems to have, but these are good problems to have. That means you're getting traffic to your miner. Now the structure of my setup ends up being one piece so that way you can carry it up the tree or on the rooftop and you don't have to make multiple trips going back and forth with this setup. I personally do hate going up on roofs, but uh, my buddy Jordan taught me recently that if you take off your shoes and you just go up in your socks, you have a lot more grip and you're basically the next Spider-Man. Should have thought of that. Now for those of you who don't know anything about this, don't feel embarrassed, don't feel bad. I have no clue what I'm doing most of the time. And I'm not a construction worker, I'm not an electrician. I worked on electronics in the Navy. Hey, what's the whole thing right here? Yeah, sure. Hey. But a lot of the stuff is still new to me. So as long as you're an action taker, you have everything that you need to do and just follow these videos that I've been posting and you should be good to go. Now the pole, I get it from Home Depot. Walk inside, go to the electrical aisle and almost certainly it's right at the front of that aisle. Now it's just metal conduit. I picked this four to five foot pole because anything bigger, it really just won't fit into my car. But if you need something longer, you do have options there. Now this could be a great resource for you to get your antenna higher. In that same aisle, you can play with your fittings. So I use these fittings for the enclosure and I mount it straight onto the pole. Now anyone who's an expert in any of this, I 100% welcome you to drop anything down below in the comment section to correct me if I say something wrong. I do appreciate your feedback because collectively I can use it to make better content for everyone here. And at the end of the day, we're just really here to make the most money for as long as we can. Now the enclosure, I got this off of Amazon. I use this one because I've gotten a different one in the past and there just happens to be no gasket on it. Or sometimes they're just super expensive. Now the only con here is that you have to slice open the fitting that you want, which honestly it could also be a pro uh, because that gives you complete control of this watertight hole that you want to make. So you can really just play with it and make it your own size and you can create any kind of opening you want. Now if for some reason I mess up or I make the hole too big, I just use two points of redundancy so that the water doesn't get in. So first I use a drip off loop. The drip off loop is just a bend in the cable, meaning the cable goes up into the enclosure instead of just going straight down into the enclosure. So that way the water can literally drip off of the cable. Now, secondly, I put rooftop caulk in the places that are open. Like when I drill a hole or drive a screw through the enclosure, I try to put caulk on both sides as well of the openings just to be safe. But the drip off loop is probably one of the most important because without that you run the risk of gravity doing its job and running water down into your enclosure and if you get water inside your miner buy my miner and honestly that would be kind of devastating i don't i don't really know what i would do if one of my podcasts got destroyed i'd probably just go broke again now while i'm in home depot i also get these u-bolts if you don't know where to find them just be like hey dude where can i get these u-bolts at now these are a bit tricky to work with if they are too fat so I would get the exact same size width or just one below. Now, when I'm in Home Depot, I rush, so I don't even try to look for this clamp right here, but this is made specifically for your antennas or the poles. This helps out so much with the frustration of clamping these poles down together, but these U-bolts come with a flat clamp. So it's not super cool because it ends up just slipping around. Now, a tip to hold these in place, you can put two zip ties on the piece that you're wanting to clamp down. This can be super complicated and frustrating. So using these zip ties in place before you actually clamp it down with the U-bolts can give you a head start and really just save you tons of time. I use power over ethernet for everything. Now, if you're not used to power over ethernet, then I have this video right here for you to watch. It'll teach you everything you need to know about a power over ethernet setup. But here's my normal setup. Timeout, confession, I have such a bad habit of saying Bobcat instead of just saying uh, a hotspot in general. So if I say Bobcat, I mean to say hotspot uh, because I'm not leaving you guys out who don't have Bobcats. I just have Bobcats, so that's, I just have a huge habit of saying it. All right, thank you. All right, so when putting this together, you wanna put the base on. You wanna make sure that it's perfectly aligned. But before you actually mount this, make sure that you have the Bobcat attached to it. Let me explain why. So I got the Bobcat here, right? Don't worry about the internet connection. But I leave this here for an example, right? You wanna make sure that when you install this, all the cables that are gonna be coming in have a clear line directly so that way there's no uh 
no bend on this cable. The connection to your Bobcat and the opening in the enclosure should align perfectly. That way you're not creating any pressure on the Bobcat connection. So this little point right here, if you skip this step, you could damage your miner. Therefore having to buy this little pigtail you can get on Amazon. It's really cheap, but it's just an annoying fix. And overall, let's just avoid that by doing this right. Now I use this three foot LMR 400 cable. The link is down below and it helps out a ton when you guys use these links. For those of you who've been around this channel, you guys know that I don't really push out a bunch of crap onto you guys. So anything really does help out and it goes a long way. But with that in mind, the reason I pick Rockland over Rack Wireless is because I'm able to actually switch the cable link with Rockland. I can pick out any signs that I want and I just find it so much easier. Rack Wireless only has three cable lengths. As you can see here, they only have three meters, five meters, and 10 meters, which is nine feet, 16 feet and 32 feet. Now I do love what they do here at Rock Wireless, so I'm gonna show this for you guys. You guys ask me all the time if cables have loss, and yes, yes they do. They have tons of tons of loss, and that's why I go with the three feet. So uh, if you look on here, they have this phenomenal chart that I like to use, and for example, this is gonna be the 9733, and they show you the loss. So for example, if you get the 32 feet, that's 1.7 dBi loss. If you get the 16 feet, that's almost one dBi loss right here. So now I use a lot of 5.8 dBi, so Therefore, if I were to use the 16 feet cable, I would be looking at like 4.8 dBi almost. Now we've covered just about everything that really matters on the enclosure. Uh, anything you choose differently would be obviously up to you. Uh, but if you have any more questions, you know, hop into our Discord. It's kind of new, very small, but it's kind of cool to see the engagement and the community that we've seen so far. And um, honestly, anything that I can do to help, um, you know, I'll try my best. But I would love to see you guys sharing your your setups, your outdoor enclosures, anything you guys are working on, uh, even outside of helium, because we will be branching off. But right now, we know we're kind of just deep deep into this helium project. So uh, you know, share with us. Let me know what you guys got going on, and I'll respond back to you. But thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.